Okay, so the starting point of this paper is this very influential works by Shannon and Hoffman about data compression. And in data compression, we have two players, Alice and Bob, two parties. Alice has some string in mind, x, and x is chosen according to some publicly known distribution. And the thing is that Alice wants to send x to Bob. The question is, how many bits does Alice need to send so that Bob will be able to retrieve x with high probability? And of course, the answer was given by Shannon and Hoffman, and they show that Alice needs to send roughly h of x bits, where h is the entropy function measuring the unpredictability in a random variable. <coughs> so this is an old result, uh, and of course it's an awesome result, and roughly speaking it shows that every message can be compressed down to its information content. So if you have a very long message, but this message is uninformative, you can find a shorter message that conveys the same information. Okay, so this is great, and what we want to consider now is kind of the interactive analog of data compression, and it is called the interactive compression problem. In interactive, in this problem, we assume that Alice and Bob engage in an interactive communication protocol. So before it was the case that Alice sends some message to Bob and Bob doesn't do anything, but now Bob can answer and then Alice can send something else and they can have a conversation. And the question is whether the transcript of every protocol can be compressed to its information content. So whether you can take this conversation and find you know, a shorter conversation that conveys the same kind of information. So this is the, the problem that we'll be dealing with. And in order to formally um, formulate this problem, we'll use the setting of communication complexity. And communication complexity is a very successful subfield of theoretical computer science with many applications to other fields. Um, and in communication complexity, the setting is the following. We have the same guys uh, from before, Alice and Bob. Alice, is, again, is getting some input x, but now we give Bob a, a possibly different uh, input y. And the thing is that Alice knows x, but nobody else knows x, and Bob knows y, but nobody else knows y, and they want to compute a function of both inputs. So for example, this function can be uh, the equality function, and then they'll want to know whether x equals to y, or any other function is how many bits do they need to exchange in order to be able to compute f? Uh, so of course, in order to compute f, they need to talk. Um, so they engage in some communication protocol. Alice can send, some, can send some message that depends on their input, and Bob may reply with a different message that depends on his input and the previous message and so on. Alice can send something else that depends on everything she knows so far. And as you can see, this protocol is a, it can be adaptive. Every message can depend on all the previous messages. And they do this for a while, and hopefully by the time the protocol ends, both players know f of x, y. So this is communication complexity. And uh, more specifically, for the purposes of this talk, we'll, we'll care about what we call distributional communication complexity. In distributional communication complexity, there is an underlying distribution mu, and we assume that the pair of inputs x and y are drawn according to mu. So x and y is chosen according to some publicly known joint distribution, and we allow the players to um, use public and private randomness. And we only ask them to compute f with high probability, say with probability 2 thirds over the selection of inputs and randomness. So again, in the setting of distributional communication complexity, we have an underlying distribution. We allow the players to flip some coins to make random decisions. And we also allow them to err with small probability of up to a th one third. And they need to compute f. So Alice can flip a coin such that Bob doesn't see the result, and Bob can do that, and they, have, and they can flip a coin together. We, they can flip and both Alice and Bob can see. So either one party sees it, and this is private randomness, 
or they can flip it together and both see the result, and this is called public randomness. So we allow them to flip any kind of coins, and we only expect them to be able to compute the function with good probability. So it's kind of a relaxed notion. And now we can define the communication complexity of a protocol pi. Uh, so the communication complexity of the protocol pi under this distribution mu is the maximum number of bits that the players need to exchange over all possible inputs and over the randomness. So this is kind of the worst case length of the protocol, the maximum number of bits that this protocol may exchange. This is called the communication complexity of a protocol. And once I have this, I can define the communication complexity of a function f to be just the communication complexity of the cheapest protocol or the best protocol that computes this function over my distribution. Okay, so I first define it for a protocol and then I can define it for a function by taking the best protocol that computes f over my underlying distribution. So those are uh, some basic definitions that are used in communication complexity. And let me go back to the motivating question of interactive compression. And remember that we're asking whether the transcript of every protocol, by that I mean the set of messages that the players exchange, whether this set of messages can be compressed to its information content. So again, maybe if the conversation doesn't convey a lot of information, we can find a shorter conversation that will say the same thing. And I guess the first question should be, how do we intend to measure the information content of an interactive protocol? So before in the Shannon and Huffman setting, it was the one-way setting. Alice just sent something, and the measure of information was the entropy function. Uh, if we want to consider interactive protocol, we need a way of measuring the information, or we need some kind of an analog of the entropy function. So what's going to be our analog? Um, so this question was considered before, and the two notions of internal information cost and external information cost were suggested and studied by a long line of papers. Uh, last year I talked about internal information. Um, today I'm going to talk about external information. Uh, so let me tell you what external information is and uh, what it does. Okay, so next I'm going to show you the definition of external information cost. But um, roughly speaking, it's the amount of information that an external observer learns about X and Y from the interaction. So suppose there is a third guy, there is Alice and Bob, and they have X and Y, and they're talking. But there is a third guy. This third guy doesn't know the inputs X and Y, but he can listen to the conversation. And we ask, how many bits of information can he learn from just from watching or for listening uh, to the conversation about the inputs X and Y. So this is external information, but we have you know, a formula for that. Uh, so this uh, is the in external information cost of a protocol pi with respect to the distribution mu. And this I stands for mutual information. It's an information theoretic notion. And uh, capital X, Y, pi, and R are random variables in this formula. X and Y are the inputs for the players. They're just drawn from the distribution mu. Uh, capital pi is the transcript of this little pi, of this little pi. So it's just a set of messages that this protocol pi exchanges where the inputs are X and Y. And capital R is the public randomness okay, that the players use. And the external information of pi with respect to the distribution mu is the mutual information between the transcript pi, the set of messages uh, of the protocol, uh, so mutual information between the transcript and the inputs for the players, assuming conditioned on R. So again, this is the number of bits that pi gives you about x and y if you already know the public randomness. So this is, uh, this is supposed to capture this intuition. What a, uh, an observer, a third party who doesn't know X and Y, learn from the interaction, from watching the set of <coughs> messages. OK, so this is external information cost and of, a, of a protocol. And we can define the external information cost of the function, as we've done before. We just take the information cost of the best or the cheapest protocol 
that computes f over our distribution. Okay, so information, external information of a protocol and external information of a function. Right, so, uh, so now we're in good shape because we have a way of measuring the communication of the protocol and the uh, of a function and the information of the function. So we can ask what is the minimal number that we should ex of bits that the players should exchange in order to compute f. And we can ask what is the minimal amount of information that the players should reveal to an external observer in order to compute f. And of course, we can ask whether those two things are roughly the same. In the one-way setting in Shannon and Hoffman case, it was the same. Uh, we can ask whether it's roughly the same in the interactive setting. Okay, so one direction is going to be really easy here. It's easy to show that the communication is always at least the information. And the reason is that if Alice sends one bit to Bob, then the observer can't possibly learn more than one bit of information. I mean, maybe he, he may learn zero bits if Alice sends something that is, you know, independent of x, but he can't learn more than one bit if she only sends one bit. And the same goes for Bob. And this easy argument shows that for every protocol, the communication of the protocol is at least the information of the protocol. Because every bit sent is one bit of communication, and at most one bit of information. And then you take the, max, the minimum or the infimum, and you can show that for every function, the communication of the function is at least the information of the function. So this is the easy direction. It's really easy. Uh, but what about the other direction? Can you show that the communication is at most information? And well, this is kind of hard. Uh, specifically, the argument we had before doesn't work here. Uh, so this is not true for protocols, because the communication of a protocol can certainly be much larger than its information. Uh, a protocol can be stupid. It, it can be wasteful. It can send every bit, say, 10 times. You know, and then the communication can be arbitrary large. OK, so this doesn't work. And if you want to settle this direction for function, you really need to consider the interactive compression problem. So this is the problem I mentioned before, but I'm going to uh, state it more formally here. Uh, what we need to know is, that is the following. Suppose we're giving some protocol pi. We want to ask whether we can find a different protocol pi prime that simulates pi say it computes the same function as pi, such that the communication of pi prime is roughly the information of pi. So again, um, so certainly it can be the case that the, the communication of pi is a lot larger than the information of pi, if pi is wasteful. But then if pi is wasteful, you may be able to find a different protocol pi prime that is not wasteful. And for this pi prime, the communication will be roughly the information. OK, um, so by now we have several clever compression protocols. Uh, one protocol shows that you can always find pi prime such that the communication of pi prime is at most the information cost of the external information cost of pi times uh, something polylogarithmic in the communication complexity of pi. Uh, so this is a great result. The only thing is that it has, uh, it depends on the communication of the, the original protocol. And the communication may be huge. So this lock term may be huge. OK, so we want something that, is only, that only depends on the information of the original protocol and not the communication. And for this, we have a second great result by Brotherman showing that the communication, that you can find a pi prime, a different protocol, with communication that is at most two to the information cost of the original protocol. Uh, so this is, of course, great because it's uh, unrelated or independent of the communication of the pr original protocol, but it's exponential. The dependency on the information is exponential. And our question is whether you can find a pi prime with communication that is roughly the information without terms that depend on the communication and without being exponential. And it seems to be really hard. Let me briefly tell you why compressing in the interactive setting is more challenging than in the one-way setting. So, so, so when, when you're doing the, compress, the compression, you forget about the task of actually the, the computing the function, right? So 
you can come so uh, y there is uh, two ways of def of defining what what do we mean by simulating you can think of simulating as computing the same function with a similar error or you can forget about f the fu the underlying function and say that if you have the transcript of pi prime you can retrieve the transcript of pi so those are two ways of defining it and and um, Actually, the simulation results works for the stronger definition. You can retrieve the transcript. Uh, the impossibility results will use the, the other definition. So those are strong uh, results. We, we always use, we always show the stronger case. Okay, so I was about to, uh, to tell you why uh, in the interactive setting, why compressing in the interactive uh, setting is more challenging um, so first, data compression is a special case of interactive compression, and therefore uh, it makes sense that it's easier. But moreover, in data compression, the, the, the thing is that Alice knows the whole message that she's going to send, and she can compress it in a smart way. She can combine the bits in a smart way and send it. So it gives her a lot of power, the fact that she knows everything that is going to be said. And in interactive compression, this is not the case. No players know the whole thing before uh, the conversation takes place. Alice knows the first message, but then the second message will depend on this first message. So nobody knows the whole thing before they actually have the conversation. So you can't combine the bits in a cool way and do something like that. And this is the real difficulty. OK, so this is just an intuition. Uh, let's go back to our problem of deciding whether the communication is roughly the same as the information. Uh, what I claim in the previous slide is that uh, the communication is always sandwiched between the information and two to the information. However, prior to our work, there was no separation between information and communication, and we didn't know whether you can always compress to the information or whether there are examples where the communication is really exponential in the communication. Um, and this is our main result. Uh, what we do is we give the first separation between communication complexity and external information cost. And we do so by analyzing an example suggested by Mark Brotherman a few years back. And uh, formally, what we show is that for every number k, you can find an f and a mu such that uh, the information cost of f is O of k, but the communication is at least 2 to the k. So we show an exponential gap, which is th the best you can uh, hope for. Um, and uh, maybe one drawback is that the f thing we have here is not actually a function. We would have wanted a function, but we, we couldn't get it. Uh, our f, or the f suggested by Brotherman, is a relation or a search problem. By that I mean that on every pair of inputs x, y, you may have many possible answers. So it's kind of a communication task. Uh, but for this task, um, in order to compute, the, to, to compute or perform this task, you need to reveal very few bits of information, only O of k bits of information. But the communication required is, is at least 2 to the k. And this shows that interactive protocols cannot always be compressed to their external information cost, which is too bad. Uh, maybe one uh, last line. Uh, another cool thing about our result is that it uh, kind of works in the prior free setting. So in this talk, I only defined information cost and communication complexity with respect to, to some underlying distribution. In fact, you can define those creatures without an underlying distribution. This is called the prior free or non-distributional setting. And for our result, uh, works for this setting as well, and we get it for free, and we're very happy about it. Okay, so this is all I have.